Shame about our own achievements. Now the Islamist says it is payback. So every terrorist attack is payback. That's an Islamist. I said about Here you have an Islamist. Oh, it's suddenly ashamed. Suddenly ashamed. It's payback to kill children. That's what he said. Who heard him say it? Put your hand up. Four witnesses. And now the cowardly jihad has lost his confidence. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, All right. I want to start off today's conversation yeah. by asking a simple question. What's the question, Bob? How many Muslims do you think are Islamists? Ah, that's a good question, Bob. Now, the liberal media and the progressive establishment yeah. will tell you that the Islamist problem is the problem of a minority. A small minority of crazy individuals who do crazy things. And that is the line that our politicians, our journalists and our social commentators try to spin. And at one level, I want to agree with them. It is a minority. But it is a minority of a stupendously large number. And as demonstration of that argument, I want to ask the following question. If Islamists are a minority that is insignificant, then why do we have Islamist armies and Islamist networks operative and functional in the following countries? The Philippines has an Islamist army. China has an Islamist network. Afghanistan has an Islamist army. India has an Islamist network. France has an Islamist network. The UK has an Islamist network. Sweden has an Islamist network. Nigeria has an Islamist army. Somalia has an Islamist army. Sudan has an Islamist army. Egypt has an Islamist network. Lebanon has an Islamist army. Israel has an Islamist network. Palestine has an Islamist army. Greater Armenia has an Islamist army. Mozambique has an Islamist army. Syria has an Islamist army. Iraq has an Islamist network. Pakistan has an Islamist army. Islamist armies and networks operate around the world. And as anyone, as, and the Muslims laugh at this. They laughed at this. They laughed and smiled. Let's remember, yeah. these Islamists are bombing churches, yeah. kidnapping Christian children, yeah. raping women yeah. and enslaving people. Mm. And a number of the Muslim audience laughed at the suggestion. Ah, they laugh, they laugh. Oh, you see it on the news every day. And you are told, and he says, we laugh because it's funny that churches are being bombed, that women are being raped, that children are being kidnapped, that churches are being persecuted. And he thinks it is funny. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as anyone knows, to marshal any frontline worker or fighter, in any organization needs more people supporting you from behind the lines than appear at the front of the lines. It's true for Christian missionaries. It's true for the British Army. It's true for the Islamists as well. As well as these Islamist armies and these Islamist networks, we also have Islamist governments in Iran, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, 
and Turkey. Yeah, yeah, the uncomfortable truth that we all must accept is that there are tens of millions of Muslims who buy into and support the idea of Islamic supremacism. That is a fact that is indisputable from the evidence. Now, I agree it is still a minority. I am not saying it is the majority. But a minority of one billion people, if we assume that only 3% of that one billion support the Islamist ideology, still gives us upwards of 40 million jihadis wow. and those who support Islamic Jihad. How many? 40 what? 40 million! Wow. Wow. That is the size of a country. <laughs> our media and our establishment are lying to us because they are afraid. They are afraid to tell the truth because they are afraid of the social, political and economic consequences here in Western Europe if they do tell the truth. And so they lie. And the sheeple who believe everything spewed out by the BBC and the Guardian believe them unthinkingly and uncritically. Now, the liberal progressives have undergone their own experiment in colonialism. They have occupied Afghanistan for nearly 20 years, trying to colonize Afghanistan and to make them like us in Europe. And they have done that by following the same failed ideological principles that they have sought to use in the UK. Which is that if you reform the institutions, the infrastructure, increase the economy, build schools, that suddenly you will take Afghanis from their world into a Western liberal world. And it has proven to be a catastrophic failure. Big failure! Wasting trillions of dollars, wasting tens of thousands of lives of, Afga of Afghanis and allied forces as well. Why did they fail? Why, Bob? Because the progressives have bought into a Marxist ideology that believes that you can change human nature through the institutions that you put humans through. Ah. That is true to some degree, but it does not deal with the fundamental characteristic of human nature, which is, which is that it is selfish yeah. and self-interested. Right. Previously, when Western powers colonized the Islamic world and Africa, they were not hung up in the same way that progressives were. They pushed their ideology onto the occupied peoples. And that is why across the entirety of the world, people buy into the idea of the nation state. That isn't an Islamic idea. That is a Western European idea that comes from the French Revolution. The reality is that unless you tackle the ideas and the beliefs that give rise to Islamism, you will never be able to destroy Islamism. That's right. Islamist movements are a response to the success of the colonial period and the European powers. One second, sir. One second. One second. One second. Moderns and Islamists 
This brother says he is an Islamist. Right here. Simple proof, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm not lying. So, modern Islamists, moderns and Islamists, moderns are seeking a compromise with Islamists. They think, progressives, that they can buy the pro Islamists off if they concede to some of their demands. This is a miscalculation of the highest order. The Islamists are motivated by a desire to dominate and to conquer. And they will not be bought off by any kind of compromise. We cannot buy them off. We can only defeat them. And that is where the moderns fail. The greatest problem with conservatives, progressives and classical liberals today is that they think that there is some kind of reapproachment to be gained with the Islamists and the Islamist network. Our government has already surrendered the Afghani people to the Islamist network and the Taliban are no different to ISIS. The difference between the Taliban and ISIS is the same as the difference between a Methodist and a Baptist. There is no difference except how they arrange the seats. No. Conservatives, I'm speaking directly to you. You will lose this ideological struggle if you seek compromise. That is the problem with conservatives, is that they want some kind of fair playing field and some kind of compromise in which the Islamists can do their thing and the conservative non-Muslim can do theirs. And it will fail. Christians, I am speaking directly to you. Your biggest problem is that you think that every issue in the world can be resolved just by praying about it. You're wrong. You've never fed a hungry person by praying about it. You go and set up soup kitchens and food banks and thus you demonstrate that it is actions as well as prayers. Now, I'm nearly finished and then I'll take your question and same to you as well. What therefore can we do? There are four things that we must shed to defeat this Islamist movement. So let us look at it. Four things that people must do to defeat the Islamist movement. And Christians, I'm speaking particularly to you. The first of these things is to shed our ignorance. It is ignorance of the realities that we face that is defeating us. Ignorance of the socio-economic and political necessities that are needed as part of this struggle to win. Too many of us are distracted by beer and football and celebrity and, and talking about revival and talking about miracles to learn the things that we need to learn to defeat the Islamist network. In 2 Timothy 2.15 it says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed accurately handling the word of truth. Truth is essential to this struggle. Speaking truth is essential to this struggle and study and throwing off ignorance is essential 
to winning this struggle. The next thing that we must do to defeat the Islamist network is to throw off shame. Shame about our own culture, shame about our own religion, shame about our own identity, shame about our own achievements. Now the Islamist says it is payback. So every terrorist attack is payback. Every woman raped is payback. That's what he said. Yes, he said. There you go. An Islamist in London saying that raping and killing and blowing up churches is payback. That's what he's saying. These are the people you are up against. Wake up. These people are determined to win. You must also be determined to win. Now, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, it states this. But may it never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. When you build your identity on Christ, the concerns of the world flee from your soul. And when those concerns flee from your soul, you find the emotional, intellectual and psychological resources to defeat the Islamists like this. Because only when you lose your fear of death, only when you lose your fear of shame, when you lose your fear of being the outcast, will you be able to stand up to the Islamists and their progressive enablers, their liberal enablers. We Christians must be proud of the civilization that we have built and go confidently into this ideological struggle, believing that Christianity is the answer that the Islamic world needs, that the Western world needs. No, the third thing that we must lose as Christians is our disunity. In John chapter 17, verses 21, I do ask on behalf of these alone, but for those who believe in me through their word, that they may be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world might believe that you have sent me. Yes, yes, lots of people. So, 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 Christ teaches and prayed for the unity of the church. The unity of the church is paramount to victory against the Islamists. When Christians fight one another because of sectarianism or denominationalism or nationalism, when you struggle against one another, like Russian Christians have fought Ukrainian Christians and abandoned Armenian Christians, you defeat yourself. It is only by unity that we can defeat the Islamists. Because in unity, we can share resources, we can share knowledge, we can share strategies, we can mobilize ourselves. But that requires the unity of the church. And incidentally, that is why movements against Islamism fail. Because those who are standing against Islamists, like Douglas Murray, are just individuals against a mass that thinks like a people. 
we must also think like a people and not as a series of individuals. The final thing that we must lose to defeat the Islamists is fear itself. Philippians chapter 1 verse 28 to 30. In no way alarmed, be in no way alarmed by your opponents, which is a sign of destruction for them, but salvation for you, and that too from God. For to you it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake and experiencing the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. Christians, we must lose our fear of the conflict against the Islamists and enter into it with the fullness of our faculties and our resources and our abilities, forgetting the failure of the Liberal government, forgetting the failure of the establishment. Lose your fear of the conflict with the Islamists and enter into it with the fullness of the skills, the resources and the abilities that you have. Now, Islamists, come here and let's debate. Come on, Butch. Islamist, I'll, 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 I'll save you extending your legs. I'll walk over to you. Right, go on. You, you had a problem. You said you were an Islamist. You said it was payback when churches were bombed and women were raped and children were killed. That's what you said. Who heard him say that? Put your hand up. If you heard it, two, two witnesses, three witnesses, three witnesses. This brother you see on camera. Sorry, apologies. This brother you see on camera said it was payback when churches were bombed. It was payback when women were raped. It was payback when children were enslaved and killed. That's what he said. So go on, justify yourself. You think you can keep your mouth shut for a minute? Your space. Just one minute. The ad hoc attacks are what the first time you're pretty useless. No, that goes over that goal. Personally, I like the ad hoc attacks are, are trash. You don't know where. Nothing. Pathetic. Help no one. Try to hold it here when you speak. Sorry. Make fun of his haircut some more. That's going to go a long way. Stop. Say it later. Talk about rape and my women. Yeah. So how, how long do I have to wait for him to speak? No, that call. Go to the mic, then look back, hold on. You finished? We're waiting. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You were interrupting me. Don't complain. <laughs> I'm interrupting you. You're upset, aren't you? You want to hit me, don't you? No. Nah. No. Nah. He, he's happy to see children this, raped, this enslaved, and churches bombed, but he doesn't want to hit me. Ah. When you made that idiot, I hope his employers see, find this you video. bark like a dog who can't stop. Defend yourself, and call. I hope the police arrest you, by the way, for supporting terrorism. But I doubt that they will, because the police are quite happy to let terrorist supporters like you walk free on our streets. Wow. Who's actually terrorizing who? Muslims, Islamists are terrorizing Christians. Right. So, in Nigeria, yeah, yeah. in Pakistan, yeah, yeah. Pakistan, in India, yeah, yeah. in Indonesia, Pakistan, in Malaysia. Pakistan, We're from Pakistan. Why is that a problem? No, it's not a problem. Are oh, you from Pakistan? Does it matter? I'm asking you. Maybe. Maybe. There was a blasphemy law against an eight-year-old. An eight-year-old Hindu child. Right. So you take one example. Oh, not one. one, one what about example. Aisha Bibi? Yeah. That's another example. What about your types of people? What about Solomon? That's another example. What's your the Christians in Pakistan are treated like second-class citizens. Is that payback as well? This, this is your petty uh, argument. Petty Syria. Syria. Argument. Syria. All right. Well, it's payback. What's happening in Kashmir then? Okay, it's payback. Ah, forget Kashmir. What's happened in Palestine? What's happened in Syria? Who bombed Syria? Who bombed Lebanon? Who bombed Daesh? Uppercut. Daesh. Daesh are bombing Syria and Iraq. Da Daesh not bombing Syria and Iraq. Are they? Are they? I'm asking you. No. 
I'm asking you. Now notice the Islamists can't condemn yeah. any Islamist terrorist network. What is your definition network. of Islamist? Uh, why? Well, yeah, you. So <laughs> what? Me what? So, here's my definition <laughs> yeah. of an Islamist. This is an Islamist. You talk about churches getting bombed. Yeah. You talk about children You're being kidnapped. Yeah. You're a parrot. You talk about people you being enslaved. That's and his not response what I said. is, it's payback. <laughs> That's an Islamist. Ooh. I said about here. You have an Islamist. Yeah. Oh, it's suddenly dog. ashamed. You're a barking dog. Suddenly ashamed. Oh, suddenly ashamed. You don't listen, brother. You don't listen. Brother, I hope. Don't come here, brother. I hope, brother. brother. I hope. I hope. I hope. That the police arrest you. I really do. Suffering non violence. Why well, support violence? I've never even slapped anybody in my life. But that's your mentality. As long as you're a Muslim, you're a terrorist. He thinks he's okay because he said it was okay to bomb churches, enslave people, and rape people, and kill children, and he said it was all payback, but he's okay because he's never slapped anyone in his life. I said that. These are the people you have to fight. You have to fight them culturally. You have to fight them economically. You have to fight them politically. You have to fight them socially. You have to fight them in argument. You must crush them in every sphere that they exist in. You must crush them. Because that is the only way you're going to defeat Islamists like this who say it's payback to bomb churches. Right. It's payback to enslave people. <gasps> it's payback to rape people. God, it's God. payback to kill God. children. God. That's what he said. God. Who heard him say it? Put your hand up. Four witnesses. Four wit five witnesses heard him say it. And now the cowardly jihad has lost his confidence. He suddenly is ashamed of what he said. Do you know why? Why, Bob? Because his conscience has suddenly been triggered because his religion didn't give him a conscience. Islam failed this brother because Muhammad desecrated other people's religious sites. That's why he thinks it's okay to desecrate other people's religious sites. Muhammad enslaved people. That's why he thinks it's okay to enslave people. Muhammad stole from other people. So he thinks it's okay to steal from other people. The Islamic empires, like the Ottoman Empire, tried to conquer Europe between 1299 and 1918. Every single year of that time, an Islamic army marched in Europe, killing, kidnapping, destroying, raping and pillaging Christian territories. Every single one. Like Muhammad, like Uthman, and what did Muhammad do to the Jews in the Kaaba? He killed all the men and he enslaved all the women and he raped one of those women himself. We Christians must rediscover that spirit that the Christians had in the medieval world. They were not ashamed to stand up to the Islamists. We must not be ashamed to stand up to the Islamists. Okay, he's got nothing to say. Nothing. If you're ashamed of your prophet's behavior, 
You need to find yourself a better prophet. And that better prophet is Jesus Christ. Christ is Lord. Christ is Lord. Das Volk. Das Volk. Das Volk. Christus Anesti. Christus Anesti. Okay. So, my next topic, ladies and gentlemen, is the silence that was met by the attack that happened here last week. 